Hello, I'm Lewis and welcome to DIY Machines, where in this video, I'll show you how you can 3D print and assemble your own trio of performing pumpkins. Though outside themselves, these three singing squashes are brought alive by a single low-cost projector from the inside of your home. This means you do not need to worry about mains electricity outside or any trickers treating themselves to your projector. The performance is controlled by your visitors using this set of mini arcade buttons. They can choose between a song, scare, or a haunting tale. The speaker for the audio is built into this control panel so that your guests can hear the pumpkins clearly from where they are without waking your neighbours from their crypts. This project has been kindly sponsored by PCBWay, a great place to source your own PCBs. More about that later. To build your own set of animated pumpkins, you're going to need a few components. I have put a list down in the description below of all of these items and where you can find them on Amazon. You're going to need six plastic suction cups, three 220 ohm resistors, some wire connecting blocks, but you can solder if you'd prefer, some M3 nuts and bolts, and a small battery powered speaker, three illuminated arcade buttons, a length of 10 core wire to run between the Raspberry Pi and our control panel, a pair of 3.5 millimeter audio jacks, some electrical hookup wire, a projector, I didn't have one, so I've used this 70 pound one from Amazon. A Raspberry Pi with SD card and power supply. And for the 3D printed parts, you'll need some filament. All of the 3D printed designs for the printable parts are of course down in the description below. You could also make the pumpkins and control box out of any other suitable materials if you don't have a 3D printer. Both your portable speaker and projector can still be used after Halloween as we won't damage them in any way whilst putting together this project. We can start by printing three sets of parts for our 3D printed pumpkins. For each one, you're going to need to print a base. I printed mine at 0.3 millimeters with some supports, a left and right hand side. I used a large layer height for these parts as they're quite large and a brim to help with the adhesion, but there are no needs for supports. And a stem. This was printed with a 0.2 millimeter layer height and a brim. I've chosen to print some of mine in cream and some of them in some bright orange colors as well. Once printed, you can take some M3 bolts and use these to attach the left and right hand side pieces to the underside of our stem. We can then use the holes found on both the left and right hand side pieces to join these to our base part. Now that's the main structure of our pumpkin put together. The next thing we need to do is join together the front edges of these panels. To do that, I'm going to use some hot melt glue because whilst it's still warm, I can smooth it in with my finger and it's almost invisible to the projections. You could also use some super glue if that's what you prefer, or if you've got a 3D printing pen, you could try and join them carefully with that. But just be careful because if you make the shell too thick, it's likely to show up in your projections. Once you've completed all three pumpkins, then we can turn our attention to the electronics in the control panel. I have included two versions of the control panel, which you can download and print. The first one, which is the one I'll be using, includes a space down at the bottom for the Sony waterproof speaker that I'm using. There's also a second version that has this part removed, so you can add your own speaker if you would like to do your audio your way. I printed mine on the print bed with its face downwards. You shouldn't require any supports for this, but I would recommend using a large brim. I 
I also changed the fluent after just a few layers so that I could create this contrasting coloured text that you can see on the front. Whilst the housing for our buttons is printing, we can set about adding some of the electronics. To each of these, we're going to add a 220 ohms resistor and three 10 cm long wires. Flip the button over so that the two legs coming from the grey plastic are at the top. Put a resistor between the top right and bottom left leg, a wire in the top right, bottom right and top left pins and then solder these into position. Once you've done this, you can repeat this with the other two buttons. Next, pop all three buttons inside of your 3D printed housing. Next, we will add the headphone jacks, one to each end of the cable to connect the sound output from our Raspberry Pi to the speaker inside of the control panel. Inside of the jack connector, you will see there are three connection points. There is one each for the left and right hand audio and a common ground. We can connect any three wires to these three points as long as we match the identical wire colors at the other end of the cable. To do that, you're going to need to expose about 10 centimeters worth of wires on one end of the cable. Don't forget to add your sleeve over the three wires before you solder them onto the jack itself. You won't be able to do this afterwards. We can then repeat this same wiring at the other end of our cable. We're going to use the same three coloured cables and use them in the same three places as we have just now. The one difference though is that you're going to want to expose 20 centimetres worth of the internal wiring at this end. Once this is done, we can then check that our two jack connectors are working correctly by plugging it in between two devices. I'm going to plug mine between my laptop and the speaker. Let's try it. I would like to take a quick minute to extend a very grateful thank you to both my current and new patrons. Thank you. Thanks to this lovely list of people, I'm able to find both the time and funds required to make and share these projects with you. Since my last video, I've been joined by a few more patrons. So as promised, a special mention goes out to Janice, Nigel, Slorko, Mike, Brad, Dusty, Chris, Annam, Thomas and Jack. Please consider supporting me and this channel on Patreon if you are able to do so. I've popped a link in the description below. To complete the wiring inside our control panel, we're going to need to connect the remaining wires to our three buttons. Now I'm going to use these little Wago connectors that you can use something similar if you like, or you can solder. The reason I'm using these is this is a particularly Halloween focused project, which means it's very easy for me to reuse my cable, connectors and buttons in a future project. We'll start by connecting all three ground connections which we can then also connect one of the wires from the main cable to. While connecting our wires to the wiring blocks, you're going to want to take a note of which colored wire from our main cable is connected to which connection in our control panel. I've created a sheet to make this easier for you to follow through. An easy way to do this is to take a photo or screenshot of this video now with your phone or tablet and then scribble your notes directly onto the device. I have left a space next to each wire coming from the buttons view to record the identifier of the wire which you used. So for example, for my ground wire I am going to record purple as the identifier as this is the colour of the wire used inside the long cable for these connections. Keep going with the other connections as laid out in the diagram and don't forget to keep your records up to date. This is my completed sheet which I will be referring to later. Once we are done with the control panel end of the wires we can turn our attention to the others. This end will be connected to our Raspberry Pi. If you wanted to, you could solder these wires directly to the pins. And now if that is what you would like to do, 
Then if you look where you put the colors on our wiring page, you'll see the pin numbers for the Raspberry Pi. However, I would like to be able to easily reuse my Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to add a connector to the end of these wires, which will then slide over the pins on the Raspberry Pi. For this, I will be using a 2x4 DuPont style connector. Now I have made a separate video showing you how to easily add DuPont style connectors to wires. So I'll put a link up to that video up here in the corner. Once you've added all the female metal parts of the connector to the ends of each of the wires, we will need to add them into the plastic block in a specific order. I'll step you through how to do that now, but if you've decided to solder yours, then you can just skip this section. Work your way through all seven of the wires one by one following the same layout. Take note that one of the wires in the corner is not used that's absolutely fine. The projections that you've seen me use in my pumpkins at the beginning of this clip were provided by Atmos FX. They've kindly allowed me to include two sample clips for you to download for your project. If you like them, then you can buy, download and copy across any additional clips from their website. There are a few steps in configuring our Raspberry Pi that we're going to have to cover. These are installing Raspbian, installing the Pi Present software written by Ken Thompson and the software that is required to support that. We'll then copy across some hardware configuration profiles that I've prepared for you and tweak them for your specific build and finally We'll copy across the media files for the animated pumpkins themselves. Now as a lot of this involves copying out commands, I've decided to prepare a written guide which you'll find over on my website doimachines.co.uk. I'll also put a link to the specific page in the description below. This way if anything changes as well I'll be able to try and keep this written copy up to date for you and correct. Once you have finished following the steps on my website then pop back here and we'll put the last few bits of this project together. To mount our pumpkins on the outside of our windows, you'll need to print three more parts. These are the aptly named pumpkin mounts. These are coupled with two of your suction cups and are pushed onto the window and then the pumpkins simply hook over the top of them. This makes it extremely easy to relocate or remove the pumpkins whenever you need to. We can also 3D print free labels to go next to our free buttons. This way, you can label them to suit your own build if you want to. Now we can add our speaker into the main control housing. You want to plug it in, switch it on and turn it up. This is then slid into position. Tidy up the connectors so that we can fit the back cover in position and secure it with some M3 bolts. Now I'm going to be mounting my control panel to this 70 centimeter square post. To do this, I've created a mount that slides over the top and is fixed in place with two screws. The control panel itself is then easily slid into position and can even be secured by adding a padlock through this loop at the back. This makes sure that if someone likes your project more than you do, it will still be there later. Now all that is left to do is to connect our Raspberry Pi to the projector with a HDMI cable, connect to our DIY control panel with the headphone jack and DuPont connector, and then power everything on. Inside are all manner of frights, especially on those cold, dark, and stormy nights. It lays in ruin, run down and overgrown But to goblins and ghosts it's one haunted sweet home Welcome to our haunted house Step right in I hope you have enjoyed this project. If you have, please consider supporting me on Patreon and sharing this video with anyone you know who may enjoy it themselves. Don't forget to subscribe to find out when I release the next project video. Otherwise, until next time, ciao for now. One quick thing before I go, that's to say thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Personally, I'm currently learning to create my first PCBs and they have been great to work with whilst I get to the grips of this. 
if you've wanted to have a go yourself at creating a PCB, or if you already know what you're doing, now there's a great time to try ordering some through PCBWay. Usually, they offer 10 PCBs for $5, but if you're a new member, they'll give you a $5 bonus, effectively getting your first PCBs for free. Try them out at PCBWay.com. To mount your pumpkins onto the outside of your windows, you're going to need to print. <laughs> now let's add our speaker into the control housing by plugging it in, turning it up, no, turning it on first. <laughs> Whew. To be able 